taken on the 12 by Tom Barry, the fullback. He's up to the 30 and down to about the 32. Tackled by Jim Gibbons. The left end for Iowa. A 200-pound junior. And it's Oregon State ball, first and 10. On their own 31-yard line. They operate from the single wing, strong side left, with Joe Francis, the tailback. Tom Berry, the fullback. It's Francis handing it off to Durden on a reverse. He's up to the 40, driving and down to about the 44. Colonel Durden, sophomore wing back. He's just 5'10", weighs 160 with Jim Bracken, the right guard, pulling out and leading the play with Don Suki, co-captain, right linebacker for Iowa, making the tackle. And it is a first down for Oregon State College on that 13-yard burst by Colonel Durden on a reverse. It's a balanced line in this single wing attack. Joe Francis running. Pass to the Iowa 47-yard line. Joe Francis, the junior, a 6-foot, 186-pounder, stopped again by Don Suki and Colin Jankler and John Nocera, who are in the game for Iowa. And the ball is on the Iowa 47-yard line. Second down, and about a yard to go for a first down. Single wing right, strong to the right. The fullback reverse, going for the first down. Tom Berry, fumble, and the cover by Iowa on the 40. Frank Gilliam, Iowa's right in. A fine defensive end recovered the fumble for Iowa. And it's Iowa's ball, first and ten. On his own 40, operating from the wing T. Balance line, Kenny Plain with Debrino and Harris back. And Hagler out on the wing. And the ball is carried by Debrino. Don Debrino, the senior. Across the 40 to about the 41 to 2 yard line with Jim Bracken, the right guard for Oregon State, making the tackle. It's on the 43, gain of three yards, second and seven for Iowa. Johnny Nocera is in at fullback, number 33, Hagler 44 at the wingback spot. Kenny Plain rolling out, keeping, and going himself to the 45-yard line. Stopped by Jim Bracken, the Oregon State College right guard. Don Debrino leading the way with a nice block. The ball's on the 45-yard line. Game of two, it's third and five for Iowa. Kenny Plain, senior quarterback, does everything well. There's a pass which is completed. To Jim Gibbons, the left end, as Iowa moves, in, moves into Oregon State College territory in a first down. Tom Berry made the tackle with the help of Norm Field. Kenny Plain maneuvering beautifully and faking uh, in excellent fashion and whipping that pass to Jim Gibbons. First and ten for Iowa on the Oregon State College 47. Wing T left this time to bring on the wing. Collins Hagler, Mike Hagler, is caught at the midfield strike by Bobby Grant, a fumble, but I believe after the whistle, let's see, after the whistle, Bobby Grant, the right end, made the tackle for Oregon State College, and the ball's on the 49-yard line of OSC, a loss of two yards, second and 12 for Iowa on the Oregon State College 49-yard line. Balance line, wing T right, Mike Hagler on the wing. Dobrino and Nocera behind Plain. A keep by Plain, and he's going. Gets a good block. He's down to the 40 and to the 35, and still on his way and driving. He's to the 15 to the 10 to the 5, and he's over. Forty-nine yards. 
Barrett for the touchdown. Don Carino threw a key block along the sideline, and Jim Gibbons, the left end, threw the final block that paved the way for the run, knocking uh, Tom Berry out of the picture. Now the try for the point. Bob Prescott will attempt it. It's good. title this year that moved him into the Rose Bowl for the first time, then Spacely went 49 yards for that touchdown, with great blocks by Don Debrino and Jim Gibbons breaking him loose for the run. And so Iowa went 60 yards as they recovered the fumble on their own 40, with Kenny Plain going 49 on that rollout. And now Iowa will kick off, with Kenny Plain booting it. Joe Francis, Arnold Durden, and Tom Barry, the deep man for Oregon State College. Prescott is booting instead of playing. A low line drive type kick taken by Arnold Durden on the 7, to the 15, to the 20, going to the sideline, and getting a block to the 30, to the 35, and down a fumble in there at the 37 yard line. I believe Dick Torek recovered for Oregon State. The Hawkeyes smashing hard. Shook that ball loose from little Earl Durden. And Dick Carrick, a 161-pound center, believe it or not, recovered. Bob Cummings, a 173-pound right guard, hit him and shook the ball loose. The ball's on the 37-yard line. Oregon State College in possession, operating from the single wing. Balance line against a 6-2-2-1 defense. Joe Francis, the tailback. Throwing a pass, completing it to 42 to Bob D. Grant, and he is down on the midfield strike by Kenny Plain. Bob D. Grant, a junior right in who had been hurt, taking that pass from tailback Joe Francis, who makes the Beavers go from that single wing style of attack. The ball is spotted down on the Iowa 49 yard line, a 14 yard gain on the play. And you'll notice the end leading the boys out of the huddle. And at this point, Iowa asks for a timeout. There's timeout for Iowa. And so in this Rose Bowl game at Pasadena, Iowa leads 7 to nothing, with some four minutes and a half remaining to be played. Nine minutes and a half, excuse me, as we recheck the clock in the first period. And already sensationally, Kenny Plain going 49 yards for a touchdown to climax a 60-yard drive. Kenny Plain, a six foot, 277-pound, 21-year-old senior from Clinton, Iowa, the trigger man for the Hawkeyes. But right now, the Beavers on the move, first and 10 on the Iowa, 49. Joe Francis and Tom Berry, the deep man. It's the fullback giving to uh, Francis, and Francis fumbles, and the ball is picked up by Hagler, but the ball is dead back at the 38-yard line. The ball is dead back to the 38-yard line as Mike Hagler recovered that fumble. Don Suki hit Joe Francis so hard, he shook the ball loose, and Don Suki, co-captain and right linebacker, that ball loose and Mike Hagler picked it up and so Iowa has the ball first and ten on its 38. Wing T. Plain giving the ball to Mike Hagler. A marker on the play as Hagler goes to the 45 stopped by Tom Berry. Backfield illegally in motion. The penalty inflicted against the Hawkeyes. Boris Dabashevsky has had almost a different type of offense in his uh, years at Iowa. This year he's operating from the wing tee with a balanced line with single wing blocking. First and 15 for Iowa on its 33. Collins Hagler, a real breakaway guy, playing the right wing now as they line up single wing, or rather wing tee right with Debrino. The tailback and on a reverse, there's Hagler coming out to the 39 yard line. It's a double reverse. 
with Kenny Plain giving to uh, Don DeBrino, going right and giving it to the wingback Colin Hagler on a double reverse with Joe Francis coming up to make the tackle from his defensive left halfback spot. Picked up six yards at his second and nine for Iowa. Iowa leading seven to nothing with eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter in the Rose Bowl. Six two defense. Plain keeps it. Plenty of time. And hits Gibbons at the midfield strike. Jim Gibbons. And he goes forward as he's tackled by right linebacker Dick Corrick to the Oregon State College 46 yard line. We noticed Mike Hagler limping a little bit. A 15 yard gain on the play. And thus it's a first down for Iowa on the Oregon State College 46. Again, a 6 2 2 1. Don Debrino running. Look at him go. He's to the 40. Getting blocking. He's to the 30. To the 25. To the 20. To the 15. And down on the 9 by Joe Francis. Johnny Nocera broke. The ball carrier loose with a key block back upfield. As Don DeBrino ran beautifully and went to the nine for a 37-yard run on the set play. Now there's timeout for Oregon State College. The score, Iowa 7, Oregon State College nothing. Oregon State College was billed as the breakaway team insofar as its runners were concerned, but it's Iowa who has done the long running today with Plains going 49 yards and Debrino having just gone 37. Buzz Randall in for Dick Clark at center for Oregon. Mike Hagler running, he's down to the five and he's all the way in for the touchdown. Up the substitutions in the line in a moment. Second 
second and six. Nub Beamer, the fullback, driving hard across the 40 and still driving across the 35 or about the 34. A sophomore fullback, driving hard and stopped again by Kenny Plain. With Bob Kittrick, the left guard, and Dwayne Fournier, the left end for Oregon State College, helping pave the way with beautiful offensive blocking. It's the first down for Oregon State College on the 34-yard line of Iowa. Single wing left. Oh, no. Decides to run, but he's caught. Dick Beer in at left tackle grabbing. And Bob Prescott, the left end, moved in to help make the tackle. On the 37-yard line. A loss of three at second and 13 for Oregon State College. For Iowa, from left end to right end, we have Jerry Jenkinson, Johnny Burris, Dick Spear, Charlie Lewis, Hugh Drake, Dick Beasy, and Bob Prescott. Lowe and Beamer are the deep men, hammock on the wing. The fullback, Nub Beamer, there's a marker on the play as he goes high into the air and is dropped on about the 33 offside against Oregon State College. Dick Spear made the tackle, helped out by Hugh Drake. Oregon State College was offside. Dick Deasy, co-captain of the Hawkeyes, decides to have a penalty inflicted against Oregon State College, costing him five yards. So it'll be second and 18 on the 42. 14 to nothing in favor of Iowa, with five and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. Negri leads them out of the huddle. Strong side left, single wing over to the left. Against almost a seven-man line. Three to a six-two, actually. And on a reverse play, it's Hammock met head on and dropped for a loss. Sterling Hammock, Hugh Drake, the right tackle, spotted that reverse. was right in on Hammock. As the Beavers try to reverse, stopped him on the 42 for a loss of a yard. Dick Beasy also helped out in making the play. So it'll be third and 19. 14 to nothing in favor of Iowa. With about five minutes to go in the first period. And now Joe Francis has come in along with Paul Lowe. Both tailbacks in there. Beamer is out. Charlie Prothro indicated this innovation. Francis decides to keep the ball. To the 35 to the 30 and down to about the 28 on a fake pass and run. Kenny Plain was in on the play along with Johnny Burroughs. Johnny Burroughs being the first to hit him. And Kenny Plain came up from the secondary to help out as the ball is advanced to the 28 yard line. A marker on the play and it's being called back. There's a marker thrown on the play. We'll watch referee John Kennedy. penalty against the Beavers, costing them a good gain and pushing them deep into their own territory. Back to the Iowa 38-yard line. Don Debrino comes in for Bill Gravel at left half now for Iowa. Paul Lowe goes out as a flanker left. Francis is deep. Hammock on the wing. Francis passing to Lowe to try to shake him loose. He tries to dodge him, but he gets to the 46-yard line before he's brought down. Hugh Drake beautifully played uh, the ball uh, car or carrier. Paul Lowe, who caught the pass thrown by Joe Francis. The ball's on the 46-yard line now of Oregon State College. Iowa leading 14 to nothing. And so a fourth down coming up. In punt formation is Joe Francis. Gabrino fumbles and it is the cover by Oregon State College. Now it's Randall. Buzz Randall covering his 
kick beautifully outside on the 22-yard line. Colonel Durden has come back in at right halfback for Oregon State College. Joe Francis has switched to the fullback spot. Paul Lowe at the left halfback spot. They interchange. And Gary Lukart is in at the quarterback spot with Fourniers, Wallen, McKittrick, Randall, Ellison, Bates, and Negri along the line. But this time, Francis flanks out to the left, leaving Lowe the tailback deep. Lowe gets to the 20, fights his way, still going to about the 16 to 17 yard line. Paul Lowe, a sophomore, he's a breakaway man, tackled by Alex Karras, the All-America tackle for Iowa, who plays guard on defense, and John Nocera, the fullback, who plays the defensive left linebacker spot, and Don Suki, co-captain, who plays the right linebacker spot. One of the Hawkeyes shaken up on the play. I believe it was Kenny Plain. I'm not certain. Let's double check. It is Kenny Plain. Fourteen to nothing in favor of Iowa. Joe Francis flanks out to the left. Randy Duncan in for Plain. All low deep. Second down and about six to go for the Beavers. And on a reverse, that goes Arnold Durden trying to get a block. He gets to the 15, where he's hit hard. Arnold Durden, the swift sophomore wingback. Frank Gilliam, the left end, a great defensive end. Offensive right end, defensive left end. Tips him up, and Frank Bloomquist, the left tackle, fell on him. The ball's on the 15-yard line. Third down coming up, and about three to go for the first down. Joe Francis flanks out to the left, number 42. Paul Lowe, 47, is deep. He is trying to get loose, but boy, they, they, they caught him. Out of bounds at about the 18. Don Suki, Don Debrino, Alex Karras, and Dick Klein all in on him. The ball's on the 17-yard line of Iowa. Fourth down coming up. And about five to go. Fourteen to nothing in favor of Iowa. Three minutes left to play in the first period. This time low flanks to the left. Francis is deep. Francis can't get it away. He tries the lateral, or started to, but he just couldn't get it away. And Iowa takes over on his 23-yard line. Frank Bloomquist is in on him. By the way, a B-plus student at Iowa, and Frank Gilliam, the left end. So Iowa stops the Beaver attack and takes over first and ten on its 23. Randy Duncan in the quarterback for the injured Kenny Plain, Jabrino, Nocera, and Hagler. Johnny Nocera, the fullback, stopped by Ted Bates in his right tackle for Oregon State. Got about a yard on the play. Oregon State has Dwayne Fournier, Ernie Wallen, John Stephan, Buzz Randall, Jim Bracken, Ted Bates, and Frank Negri along the line with Gary Lucart, Paul O, Joe Francis, and Arnold Durden in the secondary. Balls put down the 24, second and nine for Iowa. Iowa leading 14 to nothing. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first period. Dubrino and Nocera are the deep man, and Don Debrino is running, getting the block, and he's moving in trouble, and Oregon State College recovers on the Iowa 45. All low recovered for Oregon State. Arnold Gurdon hits Don Debrino, shifts the ball loose, and Paul Lowe fell on it. Johnny Nocera and Colin Tagler leading the play offensively. And the fumble cost Iowa possession. Oregon State ball on the Iowa, almost the 45. A minute and a half to go in the first period, 14 0 Iowa. Ball low. Following Francis gets short yardage to about the 42 or 3. Bob Combings playing defensive right tackle, and Don Suki were the two men who hit him in that order. The ball's on the 43-yard line of the Hawkeyes. Actually gained a yard. 
Second and nine. A minute left in the first period. Iowa leading 14 to nothing. Paul Lowe and Joe Francis are the two tailbacks in there with Paul Lowe flanking out to the near sideline. Francis taking to the air. And it is knocked down by Johnny Nocera intended for Arnold Durden. Johnny Nocera, sophomore fullback, knocks the ball down. And Francis Ebyshevsky consistently interchange Nocera for Harris at the fullback spot and Hagler for Happel at the right halfback spot. Generally, Harris and Happel have been the starters at those two positions. Whitty in at left tackle for Zwollin, Jesper in at right tackle for Bates for Oregon State College. Third down coming up. Francis passing incomplete, intended for Paul Lowe. That stops the clock with 41 seconds to go in the first period. Iowa leading 14 to nothing. The Beavers of Oregon State College from Corvallis. The academy was erected in 1858. Go back a long time before it actually became OSC. Francis in punt formation. Mike Hagler in a single safety set up for Iowa. Kick gotten away from about midfield. A nice high spiral. And bounces out of bounds at about the nine-yard line of Iowa. Beautiful kick by Joe Francis. Some 39 seconds remain in the first period. From the line of scrimmage, a 35-yard kick. Spotted on about the 10. And now we'll watch Iowa as they operate from their balance line wing T attack. Randy Duncan directing the team. Mike Hagler with the ball dives across to the 11. He tried the right side of the Beaver line. Dave Jesmer and Frank Negri made the stop. The ball's on the 11. And we're coming to the close of the first period. Fourteen to nothing in favor of the Hawkeyes. Against the six two two one defense, the wing T. Wing T left. Duncan giving the ball again to Hagler. No Sarah giving him a block. Hagler gets to the eleven and slips down at about the eleven yard line. And with that play. The period ends, and the first quarter ends with a score, Iowa 14, Oregon State College nothing. <laughs> Iowa 14, Oregon State College nothing. We're ready to begin the second quarter. Iowa's ball, second and nine, August 11. Gene Bites in at quarterback now for Iowa, number 26. He is hit and grabs quickly just at about the line of the scrimmage. Jim Bracken, the right guard, crashed tremendously in there and grabbed the gene fight before he could maneuver. Great individual effort by the sophomore right guard for the Beavers. Third down coming up. Nine to go on the 11 for Iowa. Don DeBrino, Johnny Mosera, and Mike Hagler are the other backs. And now in puck formation, taking from his end zone is Gene Bite with Sterling Hammock deep for Oregon State College. A low booming kick. Hammock takes it on the 40 to the 35. He's to the 30. One man missed him. He's down to the 20. Down to the 15. And out of bounds at the 15 yard line on a beautiful punt return. Dave Jesper, the right tackle. For the Beavers threw a key block in there to help Sterling Hammock, the junior wingback, return that punt from the 40 to the 15. The Beavers ball, first and 10 on the Iowa 15. 
Joe Francis is deep. Tom Berry, a fullback spinner, drives down to the 10 and falls on to about the 9. Senior fullback Tom Berry on the old single-wing fullback spinner, powering his way down to the 9-yard line. Gene Wright and Don Suki making the tackle. Game of six yards, second and four for Oregon State College. 14-0 Iowa. Joe Francis and Tom Berry deep. Hammock on the wing. Jerry Laird, the blocking back to the right of the center of the balance line. And there goes Joe Francis, sidestepping a man and fighting his way for a precious yard or so. As one Hawkeye almost had him for a loss, but he spun away from him. And Johnny Nocera, the left linebacker, finally brought him down on the seven-yard line. Third and two for Oregon State College on the seven. Bossy Grant leads the team out of the huddle. Single wing left. Hammock on the wing. Barry and Francis deep. And it's Barry, the fullback, driving hard down to about the two-yard line. Gets his first down. Don Debrino made the tackle. The first down for Oregon State College on the two. Jimmy Gibbons also helped out on the play. Left hand. The ball is taken by Duncan. He hands off to Hagler. Sweeper on the left side. He cuts back, tries over right tackle zone. Left tackle, the right tackle spot of Oregon State Beavers. And he finally fights his way up to about the 34 yard line with Dave Chesmer making the stop. Most about a four yard pickup makes it second down. Come up. Second down coming up at about six yards to go. The ball is about uh, 20 yards in the sideline across the way as Colin Hagler comes out on the right. As the wing team. The ball is taken by Duncan. He bootlegs the play, face back, throws a pass downfield. It is almost intercepted on the 40 yard line by one of the Beavers. That Beaver is number 22. And that's got to be Jerry Laird from Tulare, California. Teal was all in on that play also. The ball is being taken back now and will be placed on the 34 yard line. Iowa in their possession, third down coming up and still about six yards to go. The score is 14 to 6 in favor of Iowa here in the first half of the ball game or in the second quarter. Blacker off to the right for Iowa is Hagler. He's outside of right hand. The ball is snapped back and Duncan takes it and hands it, takes handing it off and face back and close the pass. It's intercepted on the 45 yard line of Iowa by Hammock and he's down immediately on the 45 yard line. That pass was intended for Jim Gibbons. But he didn't receive it. He finally made the stop. Atomic intercepted it. So all the ball is on the 45-yard line of Iowa. In possession now, the Beavers who are training 14 to 6. And this Rose Bowl game here at Pasadena. Now they come out of the huddle with Gary Laird, the quarterback, and blocking back, running the ball club. Right over to the left in a single wing. It is low in the tailback spot. Out on the wing is Hammock. The ball comes back to the tailback. It's Lowe, who's being chased, and finally decides he can't throw the ball and runs it. Down the sideline on the far side of the field, gets down to the 35-yard line, and trying to spin away from Dom Debrino cannot, as Debrino holds him down on a bossy 33-yard line. Let's call it the 32 on the far sideline. A run of 13 yards. So the Beavers pick up a first down and move into the 32-yard line of Iowa. They'll be 17 yards in the sideline across the way as they go back to their huddle. Iowa using a 6-2-2-1 defense. While facing the Black Bandits from Benton County, that's Corvallis Way. 
Ike is over to the left in a single wing. In the tailback is Paul Lowe. The ball comes back to Lowe. He takes coming off the left end, drives right into the middle of the line as the red flag goes down on the field. He hits the 30 and is stopped there by Drake. Uh, let's see, that's Frank Bloomquist. Let's see what the uh, red penalty flag has been fired down on the field for. A uh, 15-yard penalty has just been inflicted on Oregon, Oregon State, for holding. And the ball has moved back to the Iowa 44-yard line. A first down and about 22 yards to go. Single wing off to the left for Oregon State. The Beavers calling out the signals. The ball taken by Lowe from the tailback spot. He faced back. There's a long pass way downfield. And it's knocked down on the 20-yard line. It was intended that time for Paul, or rather, Ernold Durden, the halfback. Knocking it down, Colin Tiger and Don Debrino. Well, the ball goes back now to its original spot on the 44-yard line of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The ball is still in possession of the Beavers. Oregon State back in the huddle will put the ball in play on the Iowa 44-yard line. Second down coming up and about 22 yards to go. Over to the right they go on the single wing this time with Craig back in at center now for Oregon. The Staters are ready. The single wing over to the right. The ball is back now to low. He fakes passing ball. Hauls down and cracks off the left side. Moving down to the line of scrimmage. And that's about all the farther he can get. Big Alex Carrot. Iowa's All-American left tackle is in there to make the stop right at the line of scrimmage on the 44. The ball is equidistant between the sidelines on the 44-yard line. So it'll be third down coming up and still 22 yards to go for the Oregon State Beavers. With their black uniforms and orange headgears, they move out of the huddle up to the line of scrimmage and single wing goes over to the right. The tailback is Paul Lowe, the Los Angeles sophomore. The ball comes back to him. He fades off to the right, then drops on back, gets a little protection, and then he stumbles and almost goes down to his knees. Stays on his feet, gets back to the 50, and finally he's met there by Frank Gilliam and John G Jim Gibbon, and they stop him right at the 50-yard line. So it'll be a loss of six yards. For the Beavers, right back to the 50-yard line. So it'll mean fourth down coming up, and about 27 yards to go, 27 to 28 yards to go, and it practically forces the punting situation. Colin well, Tegler and Don Debrino come back to play double safety for the Iowa Hawkeyes in this 14 to 6 ball game in favor of Iowa. And Ted Terrell has come into the ball game, and he's the quarterback, and will go back to do the Oregon State kicking. He'll be on the 36 yard line. Hands out stretch, gets the pass from the center of the left foot. Booter gets it away. It's a nice kick coming downfield. Hagler waiting for it, and takes it on the. 14 yard line, swing drive, hits the 20 to the 25, the 30 gets some downfield blocking, goes to the 40, and it's finally knocked down on the 43 yard line on this side of the field by Zellin, the left tackle of Oregon State. Well, the ball is on the 43 yard line of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Cummings and Terrace gave some very fine downfield blocking on that one. The ball on the 43 yard line, first down, 10 yards to go for Iowa. The ball on their own 43 yard line, 17 yards in the sideline on the side of the field. This Happel comes in at right halfback now for Iowa. And immediately gets the ball on the handoff and drives the left side of the line, gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all the farther he goes. He may have picked up a yard with Bates, Dead Bates hanging on. He's the right tackle. Sophomore from Los Angeles, 206 pounds, string right tackle for the Oregon State Beavers. The ball is up on the 44-yard line for a yard pickup, equidistant between sidelines on the Iowa 44, in the possession of the Hawkeyes, as they break the huddle and send their wing tee out to the left. That is Bill Gravel, who is now in the ball game. He's a Hobart, Indiana sophomore. The ball is taken by the quarterback. He fades off, fires the pass, first line of scrimmage to Gibbons, complete on the 45. He moves down to the 40-yard line of the Beavers before he's hit just short of the 40. Gary Laird, Paul Lowe, not Beamer. Colonel Durden all converging to make the tackle on the 41. George pick up the 15 yards, breaks it the first down, and 10 yards to go now for Iowa on the Oregon State 41 yard line. Bill Happel off on the wing to the right, in the wing tee, he's in motion, goes off to the left, the ball is taken and handed over to the left side by Phil Gravel, he's through the left side of the line, right side of the line, and fights his way up to about the 37 before he's hit and dropped. Hit and dropped on this side of the field. Very hard by Kornick and by Lowe. Ball on the 30, let's call it the 37 yard line. On the 37 yard line, pick up that time about four yards. I was 
this ball as they move forward out of the huddle on the side of the field on the hash marker. They send their wing off to the right near the sideline on this side of the field. The ball is taken to the quarterback and handoff again to Gravel. And he drives the right side, getting down to about 32 before he stopped this time, running toward the sideline on this side of the field. Tackle made that time by McKittrick, who was in there for John Sniffen. This McKittrick is from Baker, Oregon, a junior. Also helping was uh, Paul Lowe, defensive left halfback. The ball resting on the 32-yard line from the start at 37 for a pickup of five. Makes it coming up now, the third down, and the back to uh, the body yard. Third and about a yard for IOM on the Oregon State 32-yard line. The flanker is off to the left. So on the wing tee, the ball is given to the right halfback, Bill Happel, and he drives off the left side, cracks down to about the 30. I think that'll get him a first down. He's stopped there by Ted Serrell and Mike McKittrick. The ball is just nosed up to the 30-yard line. It's going to be enough, I believe, for a first down. Yes, the official signifies first down on the 30-yard line. Ball equal to some clean sidelines on the Beavers' 30-yard line in the possession of the University of Iowa, who are leading in the ball game 14 to 6. We're in the first half, the second quarter of the first half. Off to the left goes the flank. There is the ball given to Bill Happel, and he flies off the left side, hits the line of scrimmage at the 30, where Carrick meets him. He spins away and goes down, but gets no more distance from Moriarty. So it's second and 10 now. Second down and 10 yards to go. Bill Happel in there at right halfback, replacing Colin Hagler, who was shaken up a few minutes ago on a play. But Hagler, I see, is up and warming up down in front of the Iowa bench, so he may be back in the ball game. On the wing, on the wing tee to the right, it is Happel, and the quarterback comes and takes the ball, fades off to the right, fires the pass to Frank Gilliam, down on the 20-yard line, and he's hit and dropped immediately on the 20 by Ellison, also by Curry. Curry could come in there hard on the 20-yard line. It's enough for, I believe, a first down. Looks as all to be enough for a first down. As time is being taken out by Oregon State down on the 20-yard line. And with that time being taken out by Oregon State, once again, remind you, the score is 14 to 6 in favor of Iowa over the Oregon State Beavers. And a fresh the plus. Well, it's a first try here for Iowa as the handoff goes to their left halfback, Gavon, and he drives over the right side and gets that first down. Wasn't quite enough for it a moment ago, but he got it right down on the 18-yard line. Stopped that time by the quarterback backing up the line, Lucard. Draws first down. Blaine is down in front of the Iowa bench warming up, so any of you folks worried about Ken Blaine, the Clinton Iowa senior, He's up running. He's all right. There is a handoff in the backfield to Happel. Bill Happel, and he's over the left side of the line. Still fights on his way toward the goal line. Gets down to the six-yard line, and there he's dropped by Teal and Jordan. Looks as though that might be enough for a first down, all right. There's a man shaking up on the play. An Oregon State man shaking up on the play. The ball is on the six. Uh, down to the six-yard line for a pickup of 12 yards, where it'll be first down, six yards, and goal to go for the Hawkeyes. All right, ready to go for Evan with Spike Anagnos of Lodi, California, sophomore in a center dial for Oregon State. The wing is off to the right. The ball is given to Gravel, the left half back as he cracks off the right side and dives into the five-yard line to pick up one yard, and that's about all. With John Whitty along with Luke Hart making the stop for Oregon State, right on the five-yard line. They're about 20 yards into the sideline on this side of the field, where the upcoming down is the second, and they have five yards and goal to go. 14 to 6 in favor of Iowa. These glasses down there in that huddle and see what they're going to come up with. The wing is off to the left. Duncan takes the ball, fades off, hands it over to Happel, who cracks the left side of the line, gets up to the line of scrimmage, just trips up the line of scrimmage. It's a big number 77, and that 77 has got to be Dave Jessmer in on the bottom of the pile to make the stop. Right at the line of scrimmage. So the down will be the third, still five yards and goal to go. Ball equidistant between sidelines here with about four and a half minutes left to play in the first half. 14 to 6 Iowa. Their wing on the tee is off to the left. The ball comes back to Duncan. He fades back, gives it over to Happel. He's wide around the left side of the five, and it's over for the touchdown. The right 
Come back, Bill Hamill of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, a junior at 163 pounds. Turns the corner at left end. Moves over for five yards and the TD. On out is 20. The sixth in favor of Iowa. Bob Prescott comes in to relieve Frank Gilliam at right end. Frank Gilliam, mentioned on the uh, 56 All-America team throughout the country, comes out as the kicker Bob Prescott goes in. The boot is good by Prescott, and the score is 21 to 6 in favor of Iowa over Oregon State College from Coravallis. And we'll have some changes in uh, the Oregon State backfield, apparently. Paul Love comes in at tailback, and Sterling Hammock, the junior, comes in at right halfback or the wingback. Gary Lucard of Camel, California, sophomore, is in there at quarterback, and Tom Berry of Los Angeles, a senior, is in at fullback. The line has, at ends, Negre and Teal, Woody and Jess Mercer tackles, Brackens and Smith of the guards, and Spike Anagnos is at center. And, of course, Oregon State will receive now, and kicking off will be Bob Prescott for the University of Iowa. Dick Deasy's in the ball game now, the co-captain of Iowa, and at right tackle replacing Dick Klein. Good to see that his knee is uh, allowing him to play here in the Rose Bowl game. Referee Kennedy blows the whistle for the run-up. Here comes Prescott. The boot goes deep into Oregon State territory, down to about the two-yard line. Ball taken back there by Barry. He's coming right up the middle and cracks over to the sideline. This side of the 20 to 25 to the 30. Almost breaks into the clear, but finally is nailed from the side and dropped on about the 33-yard line by Fred Harris. In at fullback now for the University of Iowa. So first down and 10 yards to go. For Oregon on their own 33. So the Staters go back to the huddle. 21 to 6 to score in favor of the University of Iowa over Oregon State. A wing back way out to the right is Tom Berry, who's usually in the spin spot. The ball comes back to tailback Low, who fires a pass across the line of scrimmage to Hammock on the 40. He breaks out the clear on the 50 and stumbles and falls on the 48-yard line. Bill Happel made a desperation lunge at him and sort of tripped him up as he got a hold of his heel. That's first down. But for that uh, Achilles tackle, so to speak, this young fellow would have been out the clear. Hammock was really trying to pick him up and lay him down. Got about two minutes and 20 seconds in the first half of the ball game. 21 to 6 in favor of the Hawkeyes. A wide flanker way out to the right is Tom Berry. In the tailback is Paul Lowe. The ball comes back to him. He fades back, sets himself. He's caught in the pocket and tries to run the ball and gets back to the line of scrimmage and down he goes. A great Dick Deasy making the tackle for Iowa. And let's see who else is getting up down there. Number 54. That's got to be Charlie Pierce. That's 54 55. Got a check here with our player Jim Zebel. Was really doing quite a job for us. Harry Glickman working on the Oregon State side of the fence, and they've really been uh, keeping us right up on top of these boys. Flanker off to the left is Tom Berry, the fullback. Low in the tail spot, takes the ball, fades back to his own 42, and it's cut back there and knocks down on the 42 yard line. Don Cookie in there, hard, low, and fast. Next stop. You see, also getting up is Bob Prescott in there at right end. He was in on the play. All back to the 42 yard line for an out there of about nine yards. Now, Joe Francis comes in the tail back for Oregon State with about a minute and 15 seconds left to play here in the first half of the ball game. And has the Hawkeyes leading 21 to 6. Debrino, Harris, and Happel in the secondary. Against the 4-4 defense, the pass is completed to Barry at midfield. He stumbles as he's slowed up by Combing and gets another yard or so to about the 46 or 7 yard line of Iowa. And Don Suki finally stopped his progress completely. The clock is moving, 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Iowa 21, Oregon State College 6. In the first rematch in the bowl, in the Rose Bowl in history, these two teams played a regular season game at Iowa City, but Iowa winning at 14-13. Tom Berry, the fullback on the wing. Joe Francis throwing a pass which is completed to Sterling Hammock at the 40-yard line. 
Suzuki hit him. And they failed to make the first down, and so I will take over. Ten seconds remain in the period. And the seconds are ticking off, and I doubt if Iowa will get a play in as they lead 21 to 6. And there it is. That ends the first half of this football classic in the Rose Bowl of Pasadena. The score is Iowa 21, Oregon State College 6. Kenny Plain, the Nile Kenny Scholar, is back in the game. Number 11, you see him over the far side of your screen. Johnny Clark will kick off for the Beavers. Mike Hagler, Don Gabrino are the two deep men. John Clark booting it. It bounces by Nocera. Hagler picks it up on the 8th, back to the 15, over to the 20, and that's about as far as he gets. Jim Bracken, sophomore right guard for the Beavers, hits him at about the 21-yard line. First and 10 for Iowa, on the Iowa 21. A marker, I believe, on the play, just a moment. Check the officials. And just an official timeout. Kenny playing at quarterback, Wayne T. Mike Hagler running. Gets a couple of yards as he tries the right side of the Beaver line with little Dick Carrick, the 161-pound center, who plays the right linebacker spot. His number is 55, making the stop. Ball's on the 22, gain of one, second and nine for Iowa. Dobrino and Nocera in behind plane, Hagler on the wing. Don Dobrino running, gets to the 25 and across it to about the 26. All-America tackle, John Witte, a 232-pounder. His number is 75, if you want to watch him. Frank Bloomquist and Bob Cummings, the two guards, help lead the play. The ball's on the 26, a gain of four. It is third and five for Iowa, leading Oregon State College 21-6. to six. Kenny Plain rolling out. Getting away from several men. Look at him go! Across the 30 to about the 33. Joe Francis finally brought him down. Norm Teal missed him with a couple of other Beavers. And Jim Gibbons threw a key block in there for the Hawkeyes. A first down for Iowa on a beautiful run by Kenny Plain. First and ten for Iowa on its 33. Seven-yard run from the line of scrimmage by Kenny Plain. Mike Hagler running. And down to about the 34-yard line. Bob DeGrant, the right end for Oregon State, number 88, brought him down. Frank Bloomquist led the play. Second and nine for Iowa on its 34. Playing the quarterback, Debrino and Harris, or rather Docera, in behind him, and Hagler on the wing. First, there goes Mike Hagler, and he's to the midfield. He may go all the way to the 40, he's to the 30, he's to the 20, to the 10, and all the way for the touchdown. A 66-yard run by Colin Hagler, 21-year-old junior. And I was out in front, 27-6. to Don Debrino, who handed it off to Colin Tagler, or Mike Tagler, as he's called, on the reverse, going 66 yards. Beautiful run, Kenny Plain holding, and Bob Prescott trying the extra point. 
Moved down to about the 19-yard line with Don Suki, right linebacker, and co-captain for Iowa, number 55, helped out by number 50, Bob Coming. And the ball is spotted down on the 18, a game of six yards, second and four. Oregon State has moved from its own 30 thus far. Francis and Beamer deep, hammock on the wing, layered up close. And on a reverse, Sterling Hammock, number 11, is caught at the 21-yard line. Iowa will not be fooled by the reverse play. Don Suki and Jim Gibbons were the men for the Hawkeyes. Suki hit him first. The ball is on about the 21-yard line, a loss of three yards, making it third and seven for Oregon State College. Almost a seven-man line. On a fullback center, Nub Beamer cracks down to about the 16-yard line. Bob Combings, number 50, the right tackle for Iowa, stopped him. And again, Don Suki. Suki has been playing a tremendous game. A gain of five yards, it's fourth and two for Oregon State on the Iowa 16. Iowa leading 28 to 6 with half of the third period gone. And so this is their big play. Joe Francis dives over the middle of the line across the 15 down to about the 13 or 14 yard line. Fred Harris finally stopped him close to a first down and the officials are going to measure. And so with our 60 inch uh, camera, you can look right in on the ball and watch the measure. See whether or not the first down was picked up by Joe Harris against the seven man Iowa line. First down. The Beavers have a first down. First and ten on the Iowa 13. Almost an eight-man line this time, and Nub Beamer spins and goes across the ten to about the nine. Sophomore fullback, the old fullback spinner. Stopped again by Don Sukiana. Nub Beamer's number is 34. Joe Francis, the tailback, 42. Sterling Hammock, the wingback, 11. Jerry Laird, the quarterback, number 22. Against the... Against an eight-man line, Joe Francis is running leaps and falls and drives and gets almost up to about the one or two-yard line. Joe Francis, walking and driving. And Bill Happel finally halted his forward progress on the three-yard line. And it is a first down for Oregon State. Don Suki again in on the play to help out Bill Happel. Francis and Beamer deep, and Hammock on the wing, and Laird up close. With the ball on the free against the eight-man line. There's Beamer diving, and right up to the goal line. Enough Beamer for that Iowa forward wall. Charging and stopping him short of the goal line. Dick Klein and Don Suki. Dick Klein's number is 70. Sleepy Klein, they call him, in Iowa City. And the ball is just too short of the goal line.
confusion about that drive was covered 70 yards was that the Beavers went all the way without a single forward pass. And you and I were commenting that on their straight ahead plays they were able to make yardage on Iowa. Of course, Iowa being ahead 28 to 6, and Nash is going to let down a little bit. But uh, as much as we'd said, we thought perhaps that Oregon State might do a little better sticking to the ground. It was interesting to find them going 70 yards without a single pass play. Okay, Al, here's the next kickoff. All right, and uh, Clark will do the kicking off. This is Doc Moore from Independence, Oregon. We'll make the run-up. Bill Happel and uh, Don Springo playing deep back on the five-yard line for the Hawkeyes. 28 to 12 to score. The fans stand here to see the kickoff. That moves forward, boots the ball as the Wadley wins on off to the right side, hits down at the 10-yard line, and bounces around on the 10-yard line on a fast the 13-yard line. All right, about the 13-yard line. Let's check that Oregon backfield. Paul Lowe is in his tailback now. Iowa 28, Oregon State College 12. Five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third period of the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California. Iowa has given Charis, Boone, Chris, Stuckey, Comey, Pine, and Gilliam, along with Dubrino, Apple, Charis, and Wayne. Bill Happel taking it on the two, coming back up to the 10 to the 15 to the 20, spins away and gets the 25. John Steffen brought him down. Green Fournier almost had him. The ball is spotted on the 26. First and 10 for Iowa on the 26. Iowa 28, Oregon State College 12. Again on that double reverse, it was Bill Hoffel carrying, but that time the Beavers were wise to the play, Buzz Randall. Uh, defeating it, playing uh, the right linebacker spot. The play goes with Kenny Payne handing it off to Don Debrino going in one direction and hands it off to Bill Hopple coming off the wing headed in the other direction. Second and ten, that was the play that Mike Hagler got loose on a little while ago for a 66-yard touchdown run. Second and ten for Iowa on its 26. Bill Gravels in at left halfback. Plain rolls out, keeps the ball, tossing a pass which is complete at the 31-yard line to Jim Gibbons, the big left end, six foot three, two hundred pounder, stopped by Joe Francis and Gary Lucar. Gibbons, number 88, a great pass catcher. And as he was tackled, he fell forward to the 33, a game of seven, so it's third and three for Iowa. Oregon State College has Lucas, Lowe, Francis, and Hammock in the secondary. Bill Happel on the wing. Gravel and Harrison behind Plain. Kenny peeps and passes, and it is into the air, and it is not back in the 48 yard line. Sterling Hammock, defending against the pass. Almost thought of it, batted it up into the air, and the alert Frank Gilliam, senior right in, the six foot, two hundred seventy three pounder, grabbed it and was down on the forty eight. It's the first down for Iowa on its own forty eight yard line. Playing gives to Happel, following Harris, but didn't get the block, and lost about a yard on the play as Buzz Randall from his right linebacker spot shot the gap and brought him down with a resounding tackle. On the 47 yard line, second and 11. Iowa leading 28 to 12 with 3 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Against a 6 2 2 1 defense. Kenny Plain rolls out and keeps and passes. To Fred Harris gets away, he's at midfield on the 45 and down on the 43 yard line. Fred Harris broke loose.
loose from the first beaver who tried to get him down and went on after catching that pass. Joe Francis tried to haunt him, but it was Sterling Hammock who finally did, and the ball's on the 43 yard line of Oregon State College. Third down coming up. And about a yard to go for the first down. 28 to 12, Iowa. Bill Gramble across the 40 to the 37 or 8 yard line, picking up the first down, stopped by Norm Teal, number 83, the left end for OSC. Frank Boonquist and Charlie Pierce in the line for Iowa, leading the offensive surge. First and 10 for Iowa on the 37 yard line of Oregon State. Bill Happel running. He gets a couple of yards. Stopped by Jim Bracken, number 60, the Oregon State right guard. Bob Combings, number 50, the right guard for Iowa, pulled out to lead the play. And the ball is spotted down on the 36 by the referee, John Kennedy. Second and nine for Iowa. The Hawkeyes of State University of Iowa, of Iowa City leading 28 to 12. Over the Oregon State College Beavers from Corvallis, Oregon. Wayne rolling out, passing, completing it to Harris at the 30, and he's on to the 25 and out of bounds, or close to it at about the 24 yard line, driven out by Paul Lowe. A minute and 10 seconds remaining in the third period. The Hawkeyes' aerial attack has been tremendous today. Wayne has attempted six passes, and he has completed six. That's batting a thousand. Didn't ask for anything better than that, could you? Apple in motion, but the ball is given to Gravel to cross the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Wayne is mixing up his plays beautifully, and you can see by his performance why he was picked on our NBC All-America team and on others as well. Some 35 seconds remaining on the third period. Iowa leading 28 to 12. Second and four for Iowa. Bill Gravel running. Getting back to about the line of scrimmage. Joe Francis playing the defensive left halfback. Spot number 42 came up to meet him. 14 seconds. this internationally televised game the score Iowa 28 Oregon State College 12 out of the fourth quarter in the Rose Bowl Iowa 28 Oregon State College 12 third and four for Iowa on the 18 yard line of Oregon State College Bill Apple out on the wing Gravel and Harrison behind Kenny Swain Gibbons and Gilliam at the end Swain rolling out keeping out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. Driven out by All-America John Whitty, Oregon State left tackle number 75. The fullback Fred Harris, number 35, led the play. Ball's on the 16, actually right in between the 16 and 17-yard lines. And so it is fourth down coming up with about two to go for Iowa. Jim Gibbons, number 88 at left end, Frank Gibbons, 87 at right end. Bill Gravel, 14. Fred Harris, 35. Bill Happel, number 40. Gravel is on the wing left. And Plain rolling out. He's got a man open in the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown. by Jim Passing attempt. And it is Iowa 34, Oregon State College 12. 
Bob Prescott trying to point, playing holding. It's good. Iowa, 35, Oregon State College, 12. Jim Gibbons, Iowa's top pass catcher, who got 12 during the regular season for 184 yards and three touchdowns, has been uh, a tremendous day for the Hawkeyes. He caught a 33 yarder against Oregon State in the regular season game between these two teams, which Iowa won 14 to 13. And before the Iowa kickoff to the Beavers, Bob Prescott's boot is picked up at the 28-yard line by Ted Searle, the blocking back, and he runs it up to about the 38-yard line. There's a low kick. Nick Deasy, the right tackle, co-captain of Iowa, number 73, stopped him. Oregon State has Norm Teal, uh, check that, Dwayne Fournier, 87 in the left end, and Bob DeGrant, 88 at right end. Ted Searle, number 25, at quarterback, Paul Lowe, 47 at left half, Nub Beamer, 34 at full, and Arnold Durden, 14 at right half. Paul Lowe, right? the point you to about the 41 yard line Johnny Burroughs number 72 the left guard for Iowa offensive left tackle defensive left guard stopped him on the 42 yard line a gain of three it is second and seven for Oregon State College the Hawkeyes leading 35 to 12 against the seven man line Trying to pass, but can't find anyone to throw to, and finds very little running room. Frank Bloomquist and Jim Gibbons in on the play for Iowa. Bloomquist 64 and Gibbons 88. Third and seven for Oregon State College. No gain on the play. Against the 6-2 defense this time. Now low, trying to sweep. And he fumbles, and Iowa recovers on the 48-yard line. Kenny Plain recovered. Kenny Plain recovered as he grabbed that fumble on about the 48 and was tackled and fell on to the 45. Frank Bloomquist was the man who shook the ball loose with a hard tackle, and it's Iowa's ball first and ten on the Beaver 45. Now we'll watch the wing tee in operation with a balanced line, Kenny Clay, number 11, directing the attack. And on that reverse, Vern Ellison, number 65, the right guard, stopped. Mike Hagler, who went into the wingback spot, the right halfback spot for Iowa. A little over 12 minutes remaining in the fourth period, with Iowa leading 35 to 12. Bill Gravel, number 14 in the left half. Johnny Nocera, number 33 in at full. And Mike Hagler, 44 at right half for Iowa. Second and 11, lost the yard on play. Lane rolls out, and he's hit as he can't find anyone to throw to. didn't have time. Vern Ellison charged, shot the gap, the right guard, 221-pound senior, number 65, and Iowa loses back to its 48-yard line. Third and 18 for the Hawkeyes. The 6-2 defense, plane rolling out, and his pass is made into the air and caught by Gravel at the 40. Bill Gravel caught the ball, it was batted up into the air, and that is the first pass that uh, Kenny Plane attempted that wasn't a complete completion, shall we say, but on the other hand, it has to be scored a completion, 8 for 8. Gravel, who is back to uh, giving pass protection, actually caught the ball. And so it is fourth down and 26 as they lose ground on it. Johnny Nocera 
in front formation. He'll get the ball away from about his own 30. Paul Lowe takes the kick on the 20, tries to sidestep a couple of men, does, he's to the 30, goes to the sidelines, he's to the 40, to the 45, to midfield, and out of bounds at about the Iowa 45-yard line. Paul Lowe, a scintillating sophomore, where he picks him up and goes. Kenny Plain ran him out. He sidestepped, although sidestepped both, Frank Bloomquist and Hugh Drake, who almost had him caught up field. A 41-yard kick. There was a marker on the field. Iowa leading now by a score of 35 to 12. We're in the fourth period with 10 minutes and 23 seconds of playing time remaining. A 35-yard return, by the way, by Paul Lowe, but a marker on the field, a clipping penalty against the Beavers. the referee getting the ball spotted properly. Back to the 39-yard line. First down for Oregon State College. Make it the 38-yard line. Francis is in the game now for the Beavers. His pass is completed enough beam of the fullback, and he gets to the 44-yard line of Iowa. Beamer number 34 taking Joe Francis' pass. He was out on the flank, a fullback flanker, and cut down the middle. With Hugh Drake number 66 and Mike Hagler number 44 making the stop on the 45 yard line of Iowa. It is second down now with eight to go. A fullback flanker to the near sideline. That's enough Beamer, Joe Francis deep. His pass is incomplete, intended for Arnold Durden, who had it in hand, and interference is called against Johnny Nocera. Pass interference is called, and so the completion is allowed at the 35-yard line of the Hawkeyes. Don Gabrino is going back into the game for Bill Gravel. It's a first down for Oregon State College. Oregon State College has a first down on the Iowa 35-yard line. Iowa leading 35-12 to with 9 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the fourth period. Number 22, Jerry Laird at the blocking back post for Oregon State. Francis and Beamer in the deep spot, Durden on the wing. As Francis fading the pass, throws a long one intended for Hamlet, and he's got it for a touchdown. Sterling Hammond taking Joe Francis' long pass for the PD, and it's 35 to 18. Beautifully thrown by Joe Francis and Sterling Hammond. Racing downfield. Caught it beautifully and stepped in the end zone. It's 35 to 18. Apparently they're going to run for the point. And it's Beamer running for it. And did he get over? He did. You tell them, see that. Clark having missed two conversions and two attempts. Now Beamer, the fullback, ran for the extra point. And it's 35 to 19. With nine minutes and 41 seconds left to go, Iowa leads 35 to 19. When's the last time you've seen a man run for the point? Lee Beamer has done it before. 
been a long time now, but as you pointed out, uh, John Clark was having his uh, kick blocked today. I think it was due primarily to the hard charge of the Iowa line. Also, you'll notice, this is an interesting sidelight, that Oregon State College leads in first down, 12 to 11. They pull in the score, 35 to 19. But they're trying hard and giving this crowd a great show. I was in one out. Buzz Randall kicking off for Oregon State College. The ball is taken on the 25-yard line by Kenny Plain. He moves across the 35 up to about the 38 or 9 yard line. Ernie Zwallow, number 72, left tackle, made the stop for the Beavers. First and 10 for Iowa. Referee John Kennedy has placed the ball down on the 38 yard line. Kenny playing at quarterback, Bill Gravel at left half, Johnny Mosera at full, and Bill Hample. At right half. Bill Gravel running. Brought down on the 39 yard line by blocking back Jerry Laird, who plays the left linebacker spot on defense for Oregon State. Second down and nine for Iowa on its 39 yard line. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the game. That's John Nassara breaking through. Look at him go and drive and down the 30 bubbles and it's recovered on the 35. He got to the 39 as a marker down. A marker on the play. The penalty against Iowa. I think that Yosera attempted a lateral and uh, passed the ball forward and then recovered. Bill Grabble recovered it, and the penalty is for an illegal lateral. It went forward rather than lateral. The ball is on the Oregon State 44 yard line. First down. Kenny Plain on a quarterback sneak driving to the 35 yard line. The senior quarterback who does everything well, stopped by Sterling Hammock. Number 11, Kenny Plain, stopped by number 11, Sterling Hammock. The ball's on the 36 yard line of Oregon State College. Iowa leading 35 to 19. Second down, about one to go. Gravel and Harrison behind Plain, half along the wing. Kenny Plain taking the air, throwing, and it is incomplete. Bill Happel had gone deep downfield. Cut over to his left, but the pass is thrown to his right and out of the reach of Sterling Hammock, who is attempting to defend against it. Kenny Plain now has tried nine passes and has completed eight. That's the first time he has not completed one today. Third and one for Iowa. Wing T, Bill Gravel on the left wing. And the fullback, John Nocera, tracks for the first down to about the 31-yard line, where Bob McKittrick, the left guard for Oregon State, number 67, stopped him at the first down for Iowa on the OSC 31-yard line. Jim Gibbons, Johnny Burroughs, Frank Bloomquist, Charlie Pierce, Hugh Drake, Frank Rigney, and Bob Prescott on the line for Iowa, reading from left end to right end. Kenny Plain keeping and running nicely down to the 21-yard line. There's a marker on the play. Flipping penalty against Iowa. Nub Beamer, the fullback, number 34, made the tackle on Kenny Plain. But a clipping penalty has been called against the Hawkeyes. 
You might have noted that Iowa and its offensive alignment align the fullback in the last couple of plays, Johnny Nocera, in the left halfback spot with the left halfback set out on the wing, leaving the fullback spot vacant. Gary Lucard has just come in to replace Jerry Laird at quarterback for Oregon State, playing the left linebacker spot, his number is 27. Bob Comington at right guard now for Iowa in place of Hugh Drake. First and 25 for Iowa on the OSC 46-yard line. Kenny Plain on a draw play, giving it to Happel across the 40 to about the 38. Ted Bates in at right tackle, number 79 for his OSC, made the stop. The ball's on the 39-yard line. Second down. 35 to 19 in favor of Iowa with six and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The Rose Bowl game at Pasadena. Bill Happel on the right wing, leaving Gravel and O'Sara in behind Plain. Against the five-man line, and Kenny Plain keeps and goes to the 35, to the 34-yard line after he is tackled by Ernie Swallow, number 72, the left tackle. Barstavishevsky's Big Ten champions leading 35 to 19. Boris Sabyshevsky has done a magnificent job of coaching the Hawkeyes this year, as has Tommy Prothero with the OSC Beavers. In two years, Tommy's brought them from the cellar of the Pacific Coast Conference to the championship and into the Rose Bowl. Kenny Plain passing to Johnny Nocera. Clean pass. He goes down across the 25, about the 23. Without Beamer. Oregon State fullback dropping him. has dominated this game today right from the very beginning. The ball's on the 24-yard line of Oregon State College. It stopped on about the 32 or 3-yard line. Fails in his effort to pick up the first down. Ernie Swallow is the man who got in there to stop him, the left tackle for Oregon State. Number 72. And the Beavers take over as the ball is spotted on the Oregon State College. 32-yard line. Kenny Plain was shaken up a little bit, but refuses to go out. And now we'll watch OSC as they flank the fullback, Nub Beamer, out to the near sideline. Joe Francis, the tailback, looking for someone to throw to, decides to run. And heading to the sideline, goes to the 40, to the 45, and out of bounds at midfield. Joe Francis getting a key block from Sterling Hammock. Is finally run out by Bill Happel. Joe Francis, who hails from Hawaii originally, is a tremendous all-around left halfback or tailback in the single wing formation. Kenny Plain comes out and gets a great hand. from Francis to Beamer, the fullback. He's to the 40 and is down at about the 37-yard line of Iowa. Tackled again by Bill Happel, the safety man. Another first down for the Beavers. First and 10 on the Iowa 37. Now Beamer, the fullback, flanks to the near sideline. Another pass, and it's completed to Hammock at the 30. He's tackled, falls to about the 28. Charlie Pierce playing the right linebacker spot for Iowa, number 54. Gene Bight went in to replace Kenny Flame for Iowa. Francis has tried 11 passes and has completed nine. Second down for OSC, two to go on the 29-yard line of Iowa. Francis' pass is completed to Teal out in the flat. Norm Teal, the senior left end, who is brought down by Bob Cummings. Just 
That's his first down. Going to be very close. Missed it by about half a yard. About three minutes remaining in the game, and Iowa leads 35 to 19. Pullback flanker. And Joe Francis is a marker as Francis runs to the 21, but there was a marker on the play back illegally in motion. Not beam of the fullback did not get out into his flanker position in time, and when he got out there, he was in motion forward before the ball was snapped, and it cost the Beavers the gain and the first down. Johnny Burrows made the tackle for Iowa with the help of Bob Prescott and Fred Harris. So the penalty puts the ball back to the 32. Gary Lucard goes out and Ted Searle comes in at the blocking back spot for OSC. Third and six. Nub Beamer, the fullback, and the flanker out to the near sideline. Francis uh, can't get his pass away and is running and gets across the 30 to about the 27 or 8. Bob Cummings, the right tackle, grabbed him by the ankle, kept him from breaking loose. The little right guard weighs only 173 pounds. Beamer goes out at fullback. Fourth down coming up, and about a yard to go for a first down. Boris Dabyshevsky makes tackle substitutions. Alex Karras, number 77, and Dick Klein, number 70, replace Johnny Burroughs and Dick Deasy at the tackle post. They play the two guard posts on defense. Paul Lowe in for Nub Beamer. Putting two tailbacks in there now for Oregon State College, and Lowe flanks out to the right. Fourth down and one. And the bad snap from center. The ball is recovered by Oregon State College, but of course the ball goes over to Iowa, way back on the Iowa 47 yard line. For fourth and one, a snap from center that went all the way back. Dick Torrick. Intending to center it to Joe Francis, got off a bad uh, snap from center. And the Hawkeyes take possession on their own 46. Looks as if Alex Karras is the man who recovered for Iowa. A minute and 58 seconds remaining in the game, 35 to 19 Iowa. Fred Harris, the fullback, taking the handoff from quarterback Gene Bite. Joe Francis made the stop as the ball was moved to the Oregon State College 47-yard line with Dick Fear leading the play. Helped out by a nice block on the part of Frank Gilliam. Second down and three. A minute and a half left in the game. There's a marker on the play as Fred Harris Went into the middle of the line. The holding penalty. The tackles made made by Ted Searle and Ernie Wallen. Seven men going in for Iowa. Coming out are Apple and Bloomquist. Furlong running. 
across the 40 to about the 44. A minute and 10 seconds remaining in the game. Kevin Furlong, number 47, carried. Iowa 35, Oregon State College 19. And now less than a minute remains in the Rose Bowl game. Jim Willett is in his right tackle for Iowa. Don Bowen is in his right guard. As a marker, several of them thrown. Offside against Oregon State College. Stopping the clock with 38 seconds of playing time remaining. Over 100,000 people out here in the Rose Bowl, and they're all still here. Bob Hausman has gone in, the boy whose father, a fireman in Gary, Indiana, was seriously injured in a fire, lost his life, but came back on to the Rose Bowl and is getting a chance to appear. He's a left hand number 84. Gene Bright rolling out. Throws a long pass, and it is caught but out of bounds. Bob Houseman, the boy I was just telling you about, caught the pass, but he was out of bounds. The young man who is playing in this game, as you can well imagine, with mixed emotions. Breedlove is in its center for Iowa. As far as Evashevsky is sending almost everyone in. seconds left in the game. John Yonda is in the game now for Iowa. Del Claver running, and he's dropped on the 49-yard line by Tony Arana. The ball goes over to Oregon State College, but the seconds are being kicked off. Five, four, three. Wait just a moment. Time. Time has been called. was called just as the clock was ticking off its final seconds. Bill Scott for Iowa. Has gone in for Iowa. Oregon State throwing, and the ball is incomplete at the 21-yard line. 